Daytime is prime time on WSNS Channel 44, Chicago. Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, and I am back with Game 2 of our series between the 1983 Chicago White Sox, who were 99 and 63, and the 1965 Red Sox, who were 62 and 100. No one in their right mind would bet against the Chicago White Sox. Boston fans tell me it was mainly because of a terrible pitching staff. So uh, we'll see if that has a chance to affect them this quickly uh, in a best of three series. But the Red Sox have already won game one. So all they need to do is win game two and they advance. So the White Sox are kind of up against the wall here um, and in, a, in kind of a bad way. And the pitchers for today's game will be for the Red Sox, Earl Wilson will be pitching. And for the um, Chicago White Sox, it will be Lamar Hoyt. So the White Sox are up first because we are in Boston because game one was in Chicago. Rudy Law leading off against Earl Wilson. And that's a 2-7, which is a pop-out, so Law is gone. Next batter is Harold Baines, Hal Baines. Hall of Famer Harold Baines, he gets a 5-4, which is a ground ball to third base. The third baseman for the Red Sox is Malzone, and he is a 3. That is a 7, probably going to be an out. And it is. So Baines is out. And with two down, that brings up Tom Pachorek. One of my favorites. 5-10 is a ground ball to the shortstop. The shortstop is Rico Petroselli. And he is a shortstop three. That is a 12. We'll see what happens there. 12 and three is an out. So... The White Sox go one, two, three in the first. No runs come across for them. And that brings up the Red Sox with um, Dalton Jones facing Lamar Hoyt. And he gets a 6 9, which is a single one to 15. And that's going to be an out. Surprising. So, one away, Dalton Jones out, and that brings up Felix Mantia, and he gets a 6-11, which is a ground ball to first base, and he's out. And then uh, that brings up Karl Yastrzemski, and he gets a 2-12, which is a ground ball to third base, and he is out, and the, White, uh, the Red Sox, rather, go 1-2-3 themselves. We don't have a base hit or a base runner yet as we go to the top of the second and Greg the Boluzinski is up, and he gets a 6-5, which is a strikeout. So, Earl Wilson, that's the first strikeout of the game, one away. Carlton Fisk gets a 3-10, which is a ground ball to third base, and he's out. And that brings up Ron Kittle, and he gets a 2-7, which is a strikeout. Just missed a home run, and that is... Uh, Earl Wilson's second strikeout. No runs come across for the White Sox. In the second, we go to the bottom of the second. With Tony Canigliaro up, and he gets a 2-8, which is a ground ball third base. One away. Right in the middle of two big hits, a double and a homer. But it isn't. And then that brings up Lee Thomas, and he gets a 2-7, which is a walk. So that's the first base runner of the game is Lee Thomas as um, Lamar Hoyt walks him. And that brings up Rico Petroselli and he gets a strikeout. Two away and that's Hoyt's first strikeout of the game. Petroselli is out and up steps. Lenny Green, who was a thorn in the side of the White Sox last game, and he gets a 4-10, which is a fly ball to center. Rudy Law is a 2, and that's a 3. That's going to be a 2-base error. 
So, Lenny Green continues to be a thorn, although really that was just actually Rudy Law being a thorn in his own side by making an error. Third error by the White Sox in the series. And that brings up Malzone, and he gets a 5'10", which is a home run, Frank Malzone. Hits a three-run homer. And gives Boston a three-run lead. That is just crazy, folks. However, none of those runs are earned because um, it would have been the third out had um, had Lenny Green, had uh, at Rudy Law caught the Lenny Green um, fly ball. And then that brings up a 5-4, which is a fly ball to center field for Tillman, Bob Tillman getting out. So, uh, yeah, Tillman out. And the Red Sox strike for three. They have a 3 nothing lead here. And this is a must-win game for the White Sox. They have got to win it. Vance Law up. He gets a 5-4 on Wilson's card, which is the third base ground ball. X and Malzone is a three. That's a six. Um, and that's going to be an out. One away. Vance Law out. And uh, with one down, that brings up Scott Fletcher. Scotty Fletcher is lining out to third base. And that brings up Julio down by the schoolyard, Cruz, and he gets a 4 7, which is a ground ball to second. The second baseman it, for the um, Red Sox is a 4. That's a 20 and a 4. And that is an out. So, Julio Cruz is out. They get no runs in the third. We go to the bottom of the third with Boston ahead, 3-0. Dalton Jones up. He gets a 5-11, which is a fly ball left field. That is Kittle. He's a 4. That's a 13. 13 and 4 is a single. So... They do get a base hit, again, due to shoddy fielding. Let's see if it comes back to haunt them like it did with uh, Melzone and the boys. But that's the second hit allowed by Hoyt. Third base runner and Felix Mantia comes up and he gets a strikeout. Carl Yastrzemski's up. He gets a 1-9, which is a ground ball. Second base double play, and Yaz is out. And he gets the uh, he hits into the double play, which ends the inning for the Red Sox. We come to the top of the fourth. The White Sox still losing 3-0. Now, they were, they were behind by three, I think, last game. No, they were behind by two last game. And they came back momentarily, only to lose it in extra innings. But we'll see if that happens again. Rudy Law, he gets a 5-5, which is a strikeout, one away. Earl Wilson is dealing out there. In fact, he hasn't allowed a hit yet. And that's his third strikeout. Harold Baines is up. He gets a 5-5, which is a strikeout, two away. So for a team that had poor pitching, and that's why they, oh, they lost 100 games... So far, we haven't seen any evidence of that. Pachorik is up, and he gets a 2-2, which is a ground ball shortstop A. And the Red Sox are up in the bottom of the fourth. They bring their lead with them, 3-0. Tony Canigliaro, 6-7, is a strikeout, one away. Third strikeout for Hoyt. Lee Thomas is up. That's a 2-8, which is a home run. Lee Thomas 
and now it's getting real bad. I mean, if it was not bad, as if it wasn't bad before, it's real bad now. Second home run allowed by Hoyt, only the first earned run because the three that scored previously, uh, they, they should have been out of the inning. Rico Petroselli up. 4-7 is a ground ball to second. The second baseman is Julio Cruz, and he's a one. So that's an out. Petroselli out, and up steps Lenny Green. 5-8, pop out to second. But the Red Sox do strike for a run, and after four, they have a 4 nothing lead. We go to the top of the fifth. The White Sox do have a nice lineup and can score a lot of runs, usually, but they, they haven't really this series. They only scored a grand total of three last game, and they haven't scored any so far through four innings. And Greg Luzinski, the bull is up, and he gets a 4-12, uh, which is a ground ball, and he's out. Up steps Carlton Fisk. He gets a 6-7, which is a ground ball to second base. The second baseman is a 4. That's an 8. 8 and 4 is in a uh, one base error. So Carlton Fisk gets on by an error. Error by Dalton Jones. And I'm not sure. I think that's their first base runner. I think it is. With one out and Ron Kittle up, he gets a 110, which is a ground ball double play to third to the third baseman. So they get no runs. We go to the bottom of the fifth. And the White Sox are losing to the Red Sox for nothing. Frank Malzone up. He gets a 5-7 which is a ground ball to the shortstop. That's Fletcher, and he is a three. That's a four. That's probably going to be something. No, it isn't. It isn't. He's out. So, Malzone is out. That brings up Bob Tillman. He gets a 2-9, which is a strikeout. And that brings up Dalton Jones with a 5-7, which is a ground ball to short. He is um, a ground ball shortstop. X, he's a 3. That's a 1. That's going to be a single. So Dalton Jones is on with a hit. A legit hit. Only the 4th allowed by Hoyt against 4 strikeouts, a walk, and... Uh, one earned run, but four runs allowed. And 6-9 is a single one of 15. And that is a single. So the Red Sox, with two down, have, uh, have runners at first and second. Yastrzemski's up. He gets a 5-9, which is a home run one or a double. Really going badly for the White Sox here. That's going to be a run. Yastrzemski knocking the run in. And Hoyt allowing yet another run. And up steps Canigliaro, and he gets a 3-7, which is a single, and knocks in another run. And, I, you know, obviously, the Red Sox don't see any reason to keep to extend uh, base runners or, you know, try to do anything out of the ordinary because, I mean, they're just, they're dominating. And Lee Thomas comes up, he gets a 2-6, which is a double one, single double asterisk. That's going to be a single double asterisk. So Lee Thomas knocks in another run, the third run of the inning. And Petroselli is up. He gets a 3-6, which is a pop-out to third. 
and Petroselli's out, but not before Boston gets three more and takes a 7-0 lead. So, you can, you can hear the, uh, the drums of doom playing off in the uh, background for the White Sox. As they send Vance Law up, he gets a 4-4, which is a ground ball second base, and he's out. I knew I should have taken the 2005 White Sox. Scott Fletcher is up. He gets 2-6, which is a ground ball short. And Julio Cruz gets a 212, which is a ground ball shortstop A, and he is out. No runs come across for the White Sox, and the uh, White Sox will take Lamar Hoyt out. He pitched uh, five innings. He'll come out after five very bad innings, four earned runs, and seven runs total allowed and they will put in to pitch um, they did pitch Burns last game uh, let's see all right they're gonna they're gonna send Kuzman out there they have not pitched Kuzman, apparently. So Kuzman on the pitch to the Red Sox. And that the first batter he will face is Lenny Green. 6-4 is a fly ball center field, one away. Frank Malzone gets a 1-8, which is a ground ball short. He's out, two away. And Bob Tillman gets a 5-9, which is a ground ball second base C. Would have been a home run one or a double on uh, Hoyt's card. So again, I save the White Sox a run by a move that I make, but that's not really, or not necessarily. I didn't necessarily save them a run, but I might have. But at this point, that's the least of the White Sox worries. So Rudy Law is going to lead off against Earl Wilson, who is out there dealing, and he's dealing a no-hitter is really what he's doing, except now he's not. It's a triple 1-13 to 13 or a double. Maybe I jinxed him right that very second. But that is a double for Rudy Law. So that's the first hit for the White Sox. Of course, they need multiple hits. Many multiple hits. Uh, Harold Baines gets two seven, which is a ground ball first base A. That's one away. Up steps Tom Pachoric. He gets a four seven, which is a single one to two. And that's actually going to be a line out to second base for Pachoric. And Greg Luzinski, the bull is up, and he gets a 6-7, which is a ground ball to the second baseman, who is a 4. And that is a 10. And 4 at second is an out. So Luzinski is out. And uh, they get no runs, despite a leadoff double, which broke up the Earl Wilson no-hitter. And Dalton Jones is up in the bottom of the seventh to lead off the bottom of the seventh for the Bobos, and that's a 4 8, which is a fly ball to left field. Or wait a minute. No, that's a home run 1 to 14. I take that back. Dalton Jones with the possibility of a home run. And that is actually going to be a home run for Dalton Jones. And he knocks in a run. Kuzman gives up his first hit, his first homer, and his first run. Felix Mantia is up. That's a 6-4, which is a fly ball to center, one away. 
brings up Carl Yaz Yastrzemski. That's a 5'11 strikeout. And that brings up Tony Canigliaro, and he gets a 6'5, which is a pop out to th um, third base. So Canigliaro pops out, but hey, the Red Sox tack another one on. And now it is 8 0 as we go to the top of the eighth. The White Sox need an offensive explosion such as the world has never seen. All right, I don't want to say the world's never seen it, but um, they're going to need something big. Carlton Fisk is up. He gets a 5 9, which is a strikeout. Wilson pitching a one hit shutout. Incredible. Wilson in uh, 1965 was 13 and 14 with a 397 earned run average, and he allowed 221 hits in 231 innings. So it's not unprecedented that he's pitching well, but maybe that he's pitching this well. Ron Kittle is up. That's a 510, which is a ground ball to short. Their shortstop is a three. It's Canigliaro. And that's an 11, which is an out, and Kittle is gone. And that brings up Vance Law, and Vance Law gets a ground ball to short. He's out. The White Sox will only have one more inning, and they will have to score eight runs in that inning. Or they will be the second highly favored team to lose, and the 65 Red Sox will be the first, or the second um, underdog team to advance to the next round and the first American League underdog team to advance to the next round. Lee Thomas is up. That's a 4-4, which is a pop-out to first. Rico Petroselli strikes out. Kuzman with the K. And Lenny Green is up, and that's a 6-6, which is a single one to eight. And it is not. It is actually a line out to short. Lenny Green is out. But the White Sox have got to get eight runs right here. Which is a tall order against a man who's pitching a one-hit shutout. Scott Fletcher's up. He gets a 2-2, which is a walk. So at least that's a base runner. Fletcher walks against Wilson. Julio down by the schoolyard gets a 5-7, which is a double one to four or a single. And that's going to be a double. So runners at second and third, no outs. Julio Cruz, which would have been nice if the score right now had been... Um, wait a minute, what was that? 5-7? Yeah, it was a double, so yeah. And that would have been nice if the score had been like something like 2 nothing or 3-1 to one or something like that. But um, at 8 uh, nothing, it's, you know, <laughs> Earl Wilson's got nothing to worry about being pulled. Rudy Law is up. 5-5 five, five is a strikeout. One away. And that's going to be Wilson's sixth strikeout of the game. Harold Baines is up. He gets a 1-8, which is a double 1-18, to 18, and knocks in two runs. Wilson with his third hit allowed. Another, and, uh, and actually two earned runs. Pachorek is up. He gets a 1-5, which is a ground ball third base A, so that's two away. And that brings up the bull, and the bull gets a 6-3, which is a ground ball to first. The first baseman is Lee Thomas, and he's a 3. That's a 13 and a 3. At first is out. And Luzinski's gone, and that is it for the White Sox. They will not advance. Nothing! You lose!
Good day, sir! What is in fact going to happen is that the 65 Red Sox will advance on the strength of an 8-2 victory here in Game 2 after winning Game 1 in extra innings by the score of 4-3. So the 65 Red Sox advance and they become the second team to advance to the second round with uh, uh, while being the the um, the losingest team in their mat their uh, initial round matchup the other team was the 61 Phillies so those two teams are in the second round even though they were vastly inferior to the teams that they played and that's going to be it for me sportsman Z Bob Zolke signing off